One quick thing I feel like I should mention before we get started with this, there is a missable weapon once you get too far into the game. Essentially, once you get to this area, you should stop and grab it because once you complete this area, uh, you can no longer get it in this same playthrough. Once you get here, be careful and don't complete it yet. There will be timestamps in the video if you wanna jump around, trying to organize it in the order you can get them, which is why we're starting in Limgrave here, and the first legendary will be down here in Castle Morn. Regardless of which waypoint you choose to get here, the path is relatively straightforward as there is a path pretty much going all the way there. Once you make it to the castle, you're essentially just gonna wanna go through it. I'm not gonna have like a walkthrough for each area because that would take way too long. But yeah, past all these enemies on the hill, Past the pumpkin head, taking a right, going up this ladder. Making your way across the top of the castle, you can drop down and hit the Site of Grace. And from this Site of Grace, you basically just want to make your way down as much as possible. You can see the boss room way down there. Essentially, just keep looking for ways to drop down without killing yourself. And once you make it through the yellow mist door, you have a boss to fight. And you get your first legendary, the Grafted Blade Greatsword. So for legendaries, Limgrave is done. We are now moving on to Liurnia for the Sword of Night and Flame that will be in Karia Manor. You can get up here from the lake, and for clarity, we may well go ahead and start outside of Karia Manor. And as you can see from the lake, you can get straight up here. There is an invisible door here in the way of the path. Um, just slice it to open. And here's the entrance to Karia Manor. Once you get here, you basically wanna take a sharp left and follow the wall until you get to this staircase. Continue on going up the stairs and taking the one path you can and eventually you'll come to another site of grace. From here, you wanna make your way outside onto these bridges. Once you make it to the end of the path, there is a rooftop you should be able to safely jump down to without taking damage. And then another one directly ahead of it. And when you see a hole in the ground with a ladder, you know you're in the right place. Go ahead and jump down there. And in this room is the chest containing Sword of Night and Flame. There you go. Next, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword. Uh, this is the weapon you get from completing Ronnie's quest. I made a whole separate video on that. I'll link in the description. But essentially, after beating the Karia Manor boss, she should be here in Ronnie's Rise. And you can do the quest from there with my video if necessary. So for the next weapon, Ruin's Greatsword, we're ha we have to go to Kaelid. And this one is a little bit more complicated because certain things can happen to temporarily lock you out of this weapon. This place does involve Ronnie's quest line, so if you've gone far enough in that to where uh, Blight is here, or if you've gone far enough in the main quest to have taken the Grand Lift of Dectus, then when you arrive here, all enemies will already be dead, including the bosses you need to kill for this weapon. If you do run into this issue, you essentially have to complete the festival, aka defeating Radon. As for how to get in there in the first place, there should be a teleporter here that will send you directly to the center. However, if that is not active for whatever reason, you can pass the impassable bridge and you'll eventually come to a locked gate. From here, go to the right, following along the cliff side here. Keep making your way past these bats up the cliffs. You'll eventually come to a graveyard and near here, near these steps, there is a ladder. After climbing up the ladder, you are technically in Redmain Castle. Follow along the rooftops until you can drop down. Making your way down and through the castle, you'll eventually come across this Site of Grace. And pretty much directly outside of this Site of Grace room, there will be the boss room pretty much next door. There you'll have to fight two bosses at the same time and you'll get your Ruins Greatsword. I just cheese everything with Moon Veil and Mimic Tear because I'm bad, but yeah, if you're having trouble with any bosses, uh, Mimic Tear is overpowered as all hell. Next we're heading to this area, I'm not sure exactly what this is, maybe Altus Plateau, but um, yeah, basically the Shaded Castle. It took me forever to find this place the first time, but essentially you can follow this valley all the way down. Uh, we're going to start from the Grand Lift of Dectus. Everyone should have this location. So from there, we're mainly just going to head north. You should be able to drop down here without uh, casualty, hopefully. A little bit of damage. If you get to this nasty swamp, you know you're on the right way. The path will be a little bit rocky, a little bit jank, but uh, keep heading in the general direction. And eventually, you'll make your way here. I hate this place. Instead of jumping up here straight away, though, go to the right. You'll see some rocks here. Go up that way and then up some stairs and a very important site of grace will be here because yeah, you'll probably die quite a bit and getting transported all the way back to at least the old Al Altus tunnel is not fun. From here, drop down. You have some of these screaming things. In the same area will be some stairs. Past that, follow the wall and you'll come to this long ladder and you'll find yourself deeper in the castle. From here, go right until you see this weird praying dude. You can go ahead and drop down from here to this house 
house. Go up the steps, not too far because there's a really annoying enemy. To your left is a ladder. Climb up that. Here you will find another Sight of Grace. Past the Sight of Grace and all these statues is another ladder. Past the ladder, up the stairs into a new room. Past this room, you are again outside and you have some enemies to deal with. Basically keep going in the one direction you can until you come to this room with an elevator. Before stepping on the elevator though, if you go this way, there is a ladder you can kick down for a shortcut later. Go ahead and now take the elevator up and you are finally at the boss. And there you go, Moriah's Executioner Sword along with his Great Shield. This next weapon is the weapon you can miss. It is over here in Lindell. However, that is, you can see it on screen. So basically you can get this weapon after killing Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. There is apparently a way to get it before killing him, but honestly it's pretty weird, complex, full of parkour and jumps and all that. So I'd recommend just killing Godfrey first. So we're gonna be going to Erdtree Sanctuary. This is where the battle took place. And from here we're gonna be heading west. Keep going west until you enter a room with an elevator, we're going to take that down. And if you can see it way over there in the distance, on that massive spear is indeed um, the weapon. <laughs> Extremely easy to miss and it's even more messed up that you get locked out of it. So from here you can jump down, hit this platform, and jump on the spear. Carefully make your way up without falling down. And there you go. For the next weapon, Eclipse Shotel, we're heading to the mountaintops of the giants. And that'll be here in Castle Soul. From the ancient Snow Valley Ruins waypoint, you want to go northwest until you reach this frozen lake and then follow it down here to the Shack of the Lofty. Once you get to the Shack of the Lofty, you want to go mostly south around this direction. And around here, you'll find a uh, horse jump spot. Go ahead and take that. Climb up the rocks and you'll eventually come to this bridge. Cross the bridge, past these massive skeletons. Basically, once you cross the bridge, you're gonna wanna make your way down here, here, and eventually to the bottom. And there you go, you've made it to Castle Soul. It is actually rather quick to get to from the entrance. You just wanna keep going straight to these stairs. Take a left to some more stairs. And then keep going straight ahead to this room over here. Continue going up those stairs in the room outside this castle up these stairs straight ahead of you, into the room, past this little ghost, and there it is. For the next weapon, we will need the two halves of the Halig Tree to finally unlock this secret area here. While we're in Castle Soul, we're gonna go ahead and get one half of that piece. But yeah, from the Castle Soul Site of Grace, we're going to head to the boss. Again, it's pretty close by. You have this room. What, what I like to do is uh, kill these guys real quick. Uh, because they'll call a bunch of ghosts and that's really annoying and there's a second one up here as well And once you're through that room, it is on to the boss. My mimic died. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway past him up the elevator Sitting here on the ground will be your left half so the left half was easy enough to find on my first playthrough for the right half I had to google it because yeah You'll see so there's a Sight of Grace I'm missing. I mean, there are lots of Sights of Grace I'm missing, but this one in particular, I guess, is important. So we're gonna go to approximately this area to start. And yes, here's a Sight of Grace. We're starting here and going south, southwest, and there should apparently be a slope somewhere. Yes, I see the slope. And there should apparently be a way up to this village. Yep, here we are, village of the Al- Going up along this path, we see another Sight of Grace, we're gonna tap that. And then from this Sight of Grace, we're going to wanna basically turn around and go up this hill. There is an enemy here. Keep going straight ahead, and then you'll see a pot here. To be fair, it's pretty obvious this is something. I guess I was just never actually in this area. Uh, but yeah, hit the pot. Yeah, the pot will transform into a person, and he'll give you the right half. So when you have both halves, go to the Grand Lift of Rolled, and you'll then have the option to switch action to hoisting the secret medallion. After a little bit of dungeoning and exploration, you'll find yourself at the Consecrated Snowfield. From here, you want to follow the lights, as the ghost NPC suggested, and you'll stumble upon another Lost Grace. Personally, I'm going to try and get the map first. 
Thankfully, as you get a bit further out, the, the fog does lift a little bit. So beeline doesn't really work, but you can kind of see on the map where you can keep going down, wherever these lines are not. And we basically want to make it to the river. So once you make it to the river, follow it east. Keep an eye on the northern wall. Eventually you'll come across this little tentacle man, as well as a place to put two of your stone sword keys. Go ahead and do that, and you have entered the cave of the forlorn. This cave isn't very big, but from the entrance, we have two paths. Take the right one. The left one does have a few small items in it if you care for them. And essentially, as you go down this path, there will be a fork straight ahead and a somewhat hidden one to the left. Take the left path, there there will be some yellow flowers on the ground. And then jump over to the other ice ledge and you can drop down to a new area. Carefully make your way down the platforms. And there will be some hostile jellyfish alongside this path. Continue down the path to some more angry jellyfish. Make your way down some more platforms. And once at the bottom, you will finally be at the boss room. Here we have a Mist Begotten Crusader. Defeat him and you'll get the Golden Order Greatsword, the second to last legendary. Honestly, compared to the rest of the area around here, he was not very difficult at all. So for the last weapon, you have two main options. Uh, you can go to the War Master Shack, very early location in Limgrave, and uh, kill this NPC. I generally never kill NPCs, so I don't recommend it. Otherwise, you'll have to do the entire Volcano Manor sort of sub game. And after you're completely done with that, he will invade you here in Farum Azula. For that, we have to first get to Volcano Manor. There are a few other like more official ways, but we're just gonna walk there. I uh, haven't done this in this playthrough yet, so my closest thing was Windmill Village. I basically followed the path all the way here, just going along this path, and basically starting at the Bridge of Iniquity. Following this path here, and where I dropped my runes because I died, there will be a very easy to miss ladder. Over in this area with the uh, two d weird machine monsters, just make sure to start climbing the ladder before they see you. Continuing west, past this sort of failed camp, past this rock bridge with the little NPC message there, and up another ladder. Uh, let's just see if we can ignore that that thing. Probably not. I hate those things so damn much. You'll see another ladder pretty much immediately. Climb up that one as well. And another ladder. Another ruined camp, as well as a bridge, and a little thing for your horse to jump in. Here there is a boss, you don't necessarily have to kill it, but I'm going to. But yeah, heading west from this crater, there will be a platform extending way out here. You can go ahead and jump down that, continue making your way down, and there you have it, Volcano Manor. You talk to the lady here and she'll give you a key. Use the key on one of the doors down the hall, then there's a letter here. Killing the enemies at the markers on your map. Very unlike Elden Ring to give you any markers, but there they are. Talk to the lady again, she'll give you a reward. Pick up the next letter on the table, rinse and repeat. The third letter is red. Also a little bit out of your way here in the mountaintops of the giants. You can then see the Lord after your third request. Once you go meet with the Lord, there is the Serpent Hunter here, but apparently not on New Game Plus. I actually never could defeat this boss, but I also never tried that weapon, so... That is pretty insane. Yeah, that makes everything a lot easier, I see. But yeah, so he went down. Oh, part two, okay. Well, that was still very easy with this weapon, so. But yeah, after that, go talk to everyone again, Bernal included, and once you rest at a site of grace, they will all be gone. You still can learn skills from his uh, sword here. So now that you're done with Volcano Manor, you can go ahead and go back to Faram Azula. And he will appear nearly at the end of this entire area, so you'll have quite a ways to go. I was really not looking forward to fighting these guys again, to be totally honest, but here we are. And the last hit, maybe? 
Okay, my god. They were not as bad as the first time, of course, but still. So I kind of forgot how much of a nightmare this place is to navigate, but essentially once you get past the uh, twin boss, the red knight flying dude, all those stupid birds, and the lightning dragon, you'll get to this side of grace beside the great bridge. Go on to the great bridge that leads up to the uh, boss, but turn around and go into this temple back here. Go down the steps and keep heading straight ahead. You'll see a tower over here. Go ahead and drop down and make your way to the door of this and he should be invading any second now. There he is. Perhaps not activating the other enemies would have been a good idea. Yeah, just here should be enough to not wake up the enemies. And there he is. Have your one-on-one -on -one fight with Bernard and you are rewarded the final legendary weapon as well as the trophy. Also an Old Lord's Talisman. But yeah, those are the nine legendary weapons in Elden Ring. Uh, I didn't realize some of them would be such a pain to get to. Hopefully detailed enough to at least help you out if you're missing some. I'm hoping I can clean this up decently well as I've been recording here for over seven hours. I guess we'll see. Uh, dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.